Hi, this is Alan Gleason for ADSR. Please subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel for further tutorials. In this video, we're going to look at the free virtual instrument from Native Instruments called Microprism. Microprism is a reactor ensemble, so you'll need to download Reactor Player, which is free, and also download Microprism. Once you've downloaded those and installed them, when you launch Reactor for the first time, this is what you'll be looking at. You might have also downloaded Reactor Blocks, which is another free ensemble. So the one we're going to look at today is Microprism. So when I select this folder here, down here I can see the actual ensemble. So when I double click on this, it will launch it. So I'm just going to close the sidebar for now by clicking on this search icon. So it's a very simple interface, but an incredibly powerful synth. Microprism is a physical modeling synthesizer, meaning that the components and the signal flow within it are designed to emulate real world instruments. It comes with 70 presets showcasing what the instrument can do. And you can also, if you modify any of these, by clicking on the open menu icon here, we can go into file and we can save our presets and open up existing presets that we've already created. So I'm going to reset this preset to its default state and then I'll go through the controls. So I've reset it to its default state. I'm going to make a few adjustments that will make explaining the synthesizer a bit easier to explain. Over on the right hand side, I'm going to set this fundamental control all the way counterclockwise. And this is a control that allows us to balance between the fundamental frequency of the sound and the partials that are contained within. Over on the left hand side, we have an exciter section. And this sends either an impulse or a noise to a series of resonant filters. And that's what creates the sound. So the modal bank here is a graphic display showing how the fundamental frequency and the partials within the sound evolve as the sound has been generated. So in a physical modeling synthesizer, all the components are designed to interact with each other. So when you adjust one control within the synthesizer, it has a knock on effect for a lot of other parameters within the synthesizer. So as I said, we'll start on the left hand side here. Currently impulse is turned up and noise is turned down. So impulse can be thought of as a short hit or a pluck with a plectrum that introduces percussive sound into the system. So when I play a note, you can hear the effect. I've got a high cut and a low cut just below here, which allows me to filter the input signal, which controls the amount of energy that's been fed into the system. turn down the impulse control and bring up the noise, which would be a similar control to any instrument that relies on wind input to excite it, such as a flute. So you can hear that it lends a different character to the sound. But you can also blend between the two. Currently only hearing the fundamental, because I set this fundamental control all the way counterclockwise. The time control here sets our decay. So when I turn it up more, the release control below it functions like a dampening tool. Turn it all the way up and it's no dampening. So if you imagine dampening on strings, put it all the way up, there's no dampening. And as I start to reduce it, the energy within the synth is dampened. Because we're only listening to the fundamental here, these two controls have no effect. I'll turn this all the way clockwise so that all we're hearing now is the partials contained within the sound. This high amount control here sets the decay of the higher partials within the sound. Let's bring the sound down a bit. It's going to get a bit louder. So as I turn this up. You can hear the higher partials are taking longer to decay. Below it here, we've got a HP, which is a high pass filter, which interacts with this control here, which is a bend control. So when I alter this, you can see the effect that it has on the partials that have been represented above. What it does is it bends or alters the frequency relationship between the various harmonics, changing their ratio. It allows you to go from something quite harmonic to something more inharmonic and bell-like. Also bring down the overall output of the synthesizer. Over on the right hand side here, we've got a regular cutoff, a low pass filter. And you can see its effect in our display. Below, as I said, we've got a control between balance between the fundamental and the harmonics. 
So it reacts in a similar way in that it allows us to control the harmonics, but rather than the cutoff, where it starts attenuating from a higher frequency and rolls down, the fundamental control attenuates all the partials at the same time. This control here sets a balance between the odd and even numbered harmonics contained within the sound, so when it's all the way counterclockwise, we'll only be hearing the odd harmonics or partials within the sound. As we turn it up, it will blend in the even numbered harmonics. And when it's fully clockwise, we'll only hear even numbered harmonics. So the balance of odd and even numbered harmonics in the sound has a big impact on the final result. Odd harmonics have a more mellower tone, where even harmonics tend to be more brass-like. As I mentioned earlier, the synthesizer contains a series of resonant filters, and this shift here allows us to blend between two comb filters, A, when it's all the way counterclockwise, and B, when it's fully clockwise. The volume control here sets the overall volume for the sound, and we've got two meters here. When I'm playing the sound here, you can see only the left meter is registering, which is the volume of our synthesizer. The meter on the right hand side is a soft clip or saturation meter. So when I turn up the volume control, you see the meter start to registering there, and that's registering soft clipping, adding some saturation and additional harmonics to the sound. The bottom section here features five effects controls. The cabinet is like an amp simulator. We've got an eight pole filter, which is a configuration of high pass and low pass filters, and how it reacts depends on the preset that you're using. But you've got a dry wet control here. When it's fully counterclockwise, the filter has no effect. And when it's turned up, the filter will be processing the sound. We've got a flanger, so we can have positive flanging. When you go below 12 o'clock, the flanging effect will be inverted. We've got a basic echo. And we got reverb. Along the top here we've got an LFO, so we can change the rate of the LFO, which can be synced to the tempo of your DAW. And when this is turned off, this is free running and allows us to dial in a frequency for our LFO. Over here we've got two macro controls. So when I'm playing a sound, as I turn up this control, it will adjust various parameters within our synthesizer. So within this preset, when I'm altering this, you can see there's adjusting the HP control. And although it doesn't seem to be modifying anything else, sometimes these controls can be modulating something within the background that's not visible in the GUI. So I'll just reset this to zero, and I'll have a look and see what the other macro control is assigned to. Now if we look down at our 8-pole filter, we can see that this is altering that. So, when we see white bars, the high-pass and the low-pass filter are configured in such a way as to allow those particular frequency ranges to come true. When we see black areas, it functions more like a notch filter. So we can morph the filter, but we have no control over the central cutoff frequency. The two buttons beside these controls allow control to be assigned to the LFO. So if I turn it on here, the LFO will now control the 8-pole filter. And I can adjust the rate. And the same for the other control. So now that we've gone through all the controls, let's look at some sounds in action. The beauty about a physical modeling synthesizer is that it has a very organic tone. Not that it emulates real world instruments, although it is capable of that. It means that the way it responds and reacts to user input is very similar to a real world instrument. An example would be if I trigger a note and I trigger another note, 
If I repeatedly trigger this note, you'll hear that although I'm triggering the same note at the same volume, we're going to get different variation within the result. And that's not just due to the modulation that's being carried out. So if I turn off the modulation, put that back to zero. Actually, just reset my flanger there. We're getting a lot of variation in the sound. If I was to play an arpeggiator to it. I'll switch over to a different preset. So it's a really great tool for sound design and creating sci-fi soundscapes. So that's I've got the arpeggiator on there. I'll just turn it off. So I'm just holding down a chord. I'm just going to bring down the release there so it doesn't carry on too much. You're seeing the partials evolving in a very complicated way. Our macro control here is controlling our eight pole filter. I'll listen to another preset. So this one is a bit more static. It allows to hear and view how the controls are modifying the sound here. So the display here, if I adjust my AB balance here, when it's all the way counterclockwise, we're looking at our odd harmonics there. And when it's all the way clockwise, there are even numbered harmonics. So we can blend between them. Not a variation there. I'll turn up the release and the decay of our partials. And a bit of bend. Because there's quite a bit of bend in it now, when I adjust this HP here, or high pass filter for the bend, now So it's not a typical high pass filter. It's filtering out and affecting the bend of the various parcels within the sound. So to bring real expression to the synth, using it with a MIDI controller is essential. So in order to set up the mapping, I'm going to click on my search parameter here to open up the sidebar and I'm going to click on this tab here which allows me to set the controls. So if there's any settings already made I can clear these by hitting clean. Any that are still assigned I can click on them and hit delete because I want to start with a blank canvas. So I'm going to click on auto here and I'm going to turn a control on my MIDI controller. So I'll turn the first one, second one, the third one, fourth one, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th, though you can't see them there off screen there. I'm going to select on auto again. And now what it allows me to do is I can right click on any parameter that I want to map and say I can select MIDI OSC Learn and I turn my control and now that's assigned to my MIDI controller. So I can do the same here, same here, same here. So now that I've got a few controls mapped, if I hold down a chord, just in my time there, I'll adjust the release as well. Okay. 
need a bit more decay. So when you're adjusting some of the controls, it will cause a wobble in the sound. That can either be seen as a benefit, or once you've stopped moving it, it will settle down. So I'll just turn on my arpeggiator. Adjusting the fundamentals there. high pass on the bend and it's the, the shift between the between comb filter A and comb filter B it's the high pass on the bend partials I'm going to turn my Mac controllers on to be controlled by the LFO. Slow down the rate. Get a slowly evolving sound. Drop the sound by an octave. So Microprism is an incredibly flexible, expressive and organic sounding synthesizer that can be applied to great use, whether it is coming up with conventional organic sounds such as basses, guitars and marimbas or more experimental evolving soundscapes. Its limited set of controls hide a vast array of timbres and textures that can be created. And best of all, it's free. This has been Alan Gleason for ADSR. Please subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel for further tutorials.